right in this video we're going to look at a bitcoin graph that you can make in kowp kwgt or klock this does require tasker this is the bitcoin graph and the one you see up here is just something that i'm using to play around with to make sure everything works like it's supposed to these numbers over here will change these times down here will change and the actual price at that particular time will change as well when that happens these lines will change also my main goal in this first part of this i guess a mini series of videos because this is a lot going on to get this to work correctly I'm going to focus on arrays and tasker to get this information. But before I do that, I will show you the Bitcoin graph component. It's this one right here. This looks jacked up in the advanced editor, but I assure you everything is just fine. Over in globals, we can change the font. You can change the background image. You can make it taller or shorter. You can change the font size. You can change the padding on the time. You can change the height of the card. That height is independent from the background height. Those are two different pieces. That way we can still keep our graph looking correct. The padding here, that's going to make the dots closer or farther apart horizontally. And the lines will still stay the way they're supposed to. Cush is where we can actually adjust the maximum and the minimum values. And basically we can take our max value over say this what two and a half hour time interval this max value here and this min value by applying some cushion we can take this dot away from the max if I bump cushion down to zero notice the max over this time interval and the min do hit the top and bottom of the graph a lot of math going on here y axis padding you can move the numbers over here closer or farther from the graph y-axis size we can make the fonts bigger over there on the y-axis shift dots we can shift the dots and the lines and that's actually going to shift the entire graph and as you can see it just did update from tasker and that's what changed the graph here but shifting dots allows us to move the graph without necessarily moving the y-axis dot size line thickness and you can change the line color, the dot color, and the horizontal lines, the thin horizontal lines. You can change those colors as well. And then everything else from here on down is just the codes to get this to work correctly. There is a lot going on. I am a global variable junkie because I don't like repeating long formulas like these in here. I'd rather just type it in one time and then apply that global to whatever I want to do. Now, this part here is very involved. Again, I want to get into the tasker piece. Now the test graph up here is what I'm going to be referring back to in this video to show you how the arrays work and then ultimately we will be able to take KOWP, get that information and display some graphs. So I have a crypto project and this can apply to any cryptocurrency or you can even, if you can understand all this stuff that I'm doing, you can do this with uh, temperatures, which I've already done a video on that a while back. Or anything that provides a good graphical output, you can pretty much apply these same concepts. So the profile in this project I've called Crypto is going to run every 30 minutes and it's going to run the following task, Bitcoin HTTP get. That's the only task that we have to run. I've included these other ones in here just for testing purposes, but this is the main one right here. It's not as long as you would think. It is 17 pieces long, 17 actions long, but that's the one that I have getting updated from the internet. So this test array is actually how I'm going to show you how this thing works. So all of these actions, if you're new to Tasker, you press plus and you look for that particular action name. And we have an array set. This is how we can set up an array. For this array set, I'm calling it test price. And I'm going to separate these prices with an at symbol. I'm not using a comma because you may have a comma that shows up in a number getting returned, especially when you're talking about currencies. So I'm using a different symbol to separate each number. So let's just assume we have an array. An array is a list of things. And right now I have 100, 120, 115, 40, and 90. I'm using five prices for my array. Then this second item here, I have variable set percent rate. What you're going to see is when we actually pull the actual Bitcoin price, I call that percent rate. That's the variable name. And right now I have that set to 20. And in this third action here, this is another array. This one is test Bitcoin time. So I have time two, time three, time four, time five, time six. Now there's a reason why I'm leaving off time one. Um, what I want to show you right here in a second is that this last item here is going to get popped out of the array. We're going to remove that item such that we only have five items in our array at any given time. 
both for the price and for the time at which that price was grabbed. So if I look back up here at action number one again, we do have one, two, three, four, five prices. This 90 is gonna get popped out and we're gonna shove a new one up here at the front, which is gonna shift all these prices over. And basically when it's all said and done, when we're actually getting these prices from the internet for Bitcoin, the first item in the array is gonna be the most current. And then as these get shifted over, eventually the, where the 90 is gonna go away, then eventually the 40 will go away. But that's when we start pulling things from the internet. So now we're ready to do a little bit of logic here. And right off the bat, I'm trying to test if percent rate, that variable, that price that we're gonna be grabbing in a little while, if percent rate matches regex. So that's gonna be this one right here. And when we escape a D, this is technically looking for a digit. So if percent rate has a digit in it, that means that the internet later on down the road has grabbed a price. I did find sometimes that the rate would not get grabbed once out of like a hundred tries. So I put this little piece in here to say, okay, if it wasn't able to get a price, I don't want to do anything. But if it does match a digit, if any part of percent rate matches a digit, then I want to do some stuff with that particular price. So that's the beginning of our if statement. So let's suppose that this rate, right now rate is 20, so it definitely matches a digit. There's two digits in it. So what it's gonna do is it's going to pop, array pop, it's gonna pop that last item in the array, it's going to remove it. Array pop is gonna get rid of it. You can adjust the position to whatever you want, but remember I said I want five prices in my array, so I'm gonna remove the last one, which is the oldest one, and I'm making way for a new one. And this down here doesn't necessarily have to be set up, but basically I'm saying if there is something in the fifth item of the array, this is when I wanna remove it. Once you get this thing set up and you have it running over and over and over, there's always going to be something in the fifth item of this array, so it's always gonna get removed. And after we do that, we wanna do the same thing for the Bitcoin time. This array up here, we want to remove position five. And again, I got that same test there. Assuming there is an item in the fifth position of this array, we wanna remove it. And then right after we pop those, we get rid of those, we're going to push into the test price array. We're going to push into position one, that's gonna be the newest one, whatever percent rate is. And as long as percent rate is a digit, that's how we're running this logic. If percent rate, in this case, it is 20, since it does match a digit, this is going to get pushed into the first position of a ray set that we have right here. So basically what's gonna happen in a minute, when I run this code, 90 is gonna get removed. Everything's gonna slide over to the right because we're gonna put that 20 right here in the front. And I'm gonna show you this back on the actual graph as well so you can see how all of this stuff works. So what we also want to do as well, we're pushing that price, whatever rate is, we're pushing it up into the front of this array. We're gonna do the same thing for the time. Whatever time we get, we're going to put that in the first position as well. Now we're ready for a for loop. So basically what we have here is we have this test price and this test Bitcoin time. We want to send all of these values over to KOWP. We can do this with another if statement or we can do a for loop. So 4% item in items test price. Percent item, call it whatever you want. We're not even really gonna use it, but basically here's what this for loop does. It's gonna look at every item in this array and that's going to be five prices, right? Percent test price one will be the first one in the array, percent test price two is the second one and so on. So really this is gonna go up to five. It's gonna look at all five individual items. And before we actually run this for loop, notice I have a percent num on the outside of it. I have it set to one. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna send over the test price and a test time. So let's look at the KOWP send variable. If you're using KLOCK or KWGT, make sure you use the correct send variable there. But now we're taking percent test price. This is the array. And remember right now, percent num is equal to one. So it's going to send the first item in that test price array that's the tasker string. In KOWP, I'm calling that T price one in this case. Now I'm gonna come back to this KOWP send variable right here in a second. But let's do another KOWP send variable and let's do the same thing for our time. Let's take whatever time is in position one in our test Bitcoin time array and let's call it T time one over in KOWP. This is the value that's getting sent. This is the name of the variable that we use in KOWP. T time one, since the variable num is one right now. 
So once those two variables get sent over, we're going to take that percent num and we're going to add one to it. And we're going to go back and run through this for loop again because this for loop will run for every single item in the test price array. It's going to run five times because we have five items in this array. Now I'm never really referring back to percent item. I could do that in this part here, but I think for teaching purposes, it's good to kind of keep something similar. But understand here, 4% item in this array, it's going through every item in that price array. And then when we run this for loop, when we come back again, percent num is now equal to two. So we're going to do this KOWP sim variable again for both the price and the time. And recall, so if we send now, it's gonna be percent test price two, the second item in this array. And over in KOWP, we're gonna call that T price two because num is now two. The same thing applies down here for the time and then we're gonna add it again. So now when we add one more, percent num becomes three. So we're gonna do this and this again. Then it becomes four and then it becomes five. And it's doing this for loop for every single item in this array. So once we do all that, we end our for loop and that's what's getting that information over to KOWP. Now, let me run this one time because it is gonna run. This, all this stuff that you see here, all of this if stuff, all the way down to here, this right here, I'll talk about how to get this to work in a second or what does this mean. So let's go look at our array set test price. I have 100, 120, 115, 40, and 90. So what should happen is when we run this, the 90 is gonna get popped out. Everything's gonna get shifted over to the right because we're pushing a new value into this first spot. That new value is going to be percent rate. That's what I was explaining right here. We're going to push percent rate into the first position. And that's gonna shift those remaining four over to make room for that first spot. Not only that, let's see what's gonna happen here. What's gonna get removed here? We're going to remove this fifth item. So what we're gonna have left is time two, time three, time four, time five, because we are making room in position one of the test BTC time array. That new value is going to be called new time, but you can call it whatever you want. Again, all of this is just for teaching and testing purposes. So let's run it. Notice it did run all the way up to here and the N4 did end, it just doesn't put a green arrow there. And if I exit out of here, notice what we have. This is the newest stuff and then it gets older as we move to the left. Notice time six is not up here. Notice the 90 bucks is not up here. The 20 and new time are the newest pieces. Time two, this is the second item in our array. Time three, 120, time four, 115, time five is 40. Since nothing's dynamically changing here because I'm manually setting this array, I'm gonna come in here and change some more numbers. I want you to see how the graph is gonna change. So now I've created some bigger prices. Got five items in it. When we run this loop, the 950s will get popped out. All of these slide over. And let's create a new variable set here for percent rate instead of 20, let's do something pretty big like 5,000. Now, if you think about this, 5,000 is going to be the biggest number in this array. The next closest thing to it is going to be 2,000. So 5,000 is going to be the max. The 475 is going to be the min. And that's going to dynamically change our graph in KOWP. And just for testing purposes here too, I'm going to show you how I can change these times. So now I have time A, B, C, D, and E. Time E is going to get popped out. And we're going to push in a new value in the first spot of this array. Now to change whatever value I'm pushing into that array, I can change it right into here, what I wanna call it, anything you want. All right, so monkey's gonna be the first time that we see. Now, let's run it. And now if I exit out, notice this graph has completely changed. We have monkey, time A, time B, time C, time D. Time E got popped out, remember? I think there was a 900 at the end of the array earlier, but notice it's gone, the 475 was the other one that got pushed to the end. And then that value, that percent rate, 5,000. Notice it is the max. And what you can also see here is the cushion variable in custom that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. The max is 5,000. I have a cushion of one applied to this. I could go in there and adjust that cushion some more. We'll talk about that when we get into the custom piece. 
but that is fully customizable and as you adjust those variables in your custom app the graph will still change and do everything it's supposed to do now back to this part here the else thing i had to come back in here and add this because i said one out of how many ever times i was letting this thing do it one time when it was grabbing the percent rate from the internet it was not grabbing a number I guess maybe it wasn't there at that particular time when the tasker was parsing the data. So let me simulate that for you. Suppose I come in here and I do percent rate and I set it equal to a word. All right, Doritos, whatever. The thing is, this whole if statement is not going to run now. Percent rate will not match a digit, will not match the regex digit. And basically what's going to happen here, it's not going to return Doritos uh, when it doesn't work. Like I said, one out of like a hundred times that this thing did it, percent rate returned percent rate. It didn't return a number. It just returned literally percent rate. Notice there are no digits in that. So what's going to happen there is it's going to skip all of this if stuff and it's just going to come down here and say, hey, rate isn't a number and we just stop the task. So basically what's going to happen there, it's not going to mess up your graph. It's not going to update anything. If we just press play on this, Notice it goes straight down here. It skips all that stuff. And it said rate isn't a number. And bear this in mind, nothing's gonna change on our graph because none of this stuff inside of here just ran. So we're not sending over any new variables to KOWP. No things are getting popped or pushed. Everything's gonna remain the same. That's why I have this little if piece so that I stop this task if I'm not getting an actual price from percent rate. So with that said, I'll go over to the actual task that pulls this information and you will see that a lot of this stuff is very similar. I'm using some different variable names because now I have price and Bitcoin time instead of test price and test Bitcoin time. And then the main new part here is this, these first two pieces here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stop the video because I'll talk a little bit more about this uh, website and the JSON, the JavaScript object notation stuff. But those are the main two pieces here. This one, I'm getting a JSON file from Coindesk, and then I'm running a little JavaScriptlet. Nothing too crazy, but I'll talk more about that in part two of this video. And before I let you go, what you can also do inside of this project, anytime we establish these global variables, as long as we have capital letters, you can always come in here and see what the value of your global variables are. Now you may not see monkey up here or 5,000, and that is because even though that stuff did not get updated in KOWP, when I run this task, it is going to set the array to 1,500, 2,475, and 950, and we're not altering that if percent rate is not a digit because this is only going to run array popping, array pushing, sending stuff over to KOWP. That's only going to run when percent rate does have a digit in it. And since percent rate is Doritos, obviously it doesn't have a number in it. So it's still going to set this array and set this array, but nothing else is going to happen. That's why when I run this, it says rate isn't a number. So none of these changes are applying so if I go to my bars here and I look at my test price and test time, I still had those same items. Time A, B, C, D, E, 1,500, 2,475, and 950. So I know this was a long video and we're not even to the custom part of things yet, but I wanted to take some time to really step back, talk about arrays a lot more in Tasker. They're very helpful in sending over information for loops, um, checking for the values of variables. There's a lot of good stuff here that hopefully you can apply into some task or profile that you're trying to run in Tasker. And there you have it, part one, us just messing around uh, with some stuff in Tasker and me showing you dynamically how these lines were changing and how the prices would change. All of this stuff here, though, visual, is all done in KLWP with a lot of math. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.